Hello, hello. Y'all come on in on tonight. God bless y'all. Hell on the replay, Facebook, YouTube, wherever y'all watching from, Twitter. Uh, Brother Travis Miller here with High Runs Ministries. We got teaching here on tonight. We do teaching Monday through Friday, and we do this called the Midnight Cry. I've been doing this for a year where we bring authentic teaching, transparent teaching. This ain't religion. You know what I'm saying? This ain't nothing for, for weak people. You know, you got to be a soldier to take this kind of word. So we do teachings here Monday through Friday at midnight. And this, this word has been blessing people. It's been blessing so many viewers. And I just thank God for it. I thank God for the midnight cry. And I thank God uh, for a made up mind to fix some heart. Everybody ain't got a heart to do the will of God. Everybody don't have the heart to be before people and to minister and to prophesy, you know, and to encourage, you know, everybody don't have a mind to do that. So I thank God for that. It's nobody but the Lord. So I thank God for um, my out outreach ministry, social media outreach ministry through High Realms Ministries. And I thank God for that because it's reached so many people. And and I know it, I know it's blessed bless a lot of people. If it, if it, if it only bless if it if this word only touches one person, it's done something. I'm not worried about numbers. I'm not worried about how many people follow the ministry and and click like. You know, I'm not worried about that. It's over a thousand people. You know, I'm not worried about that. You see, I don't want to count the numbers. How many of those people count? Are people feeding on this word? You know, are, are people getting fed? Are people? Or are people getting recharged, getting impartations? Like, what are they getting? You know, I thank God for, you know, I made up mind a fixed up heart. This word getting ready to draw people in this hour. You understand? It's getting ready to draw those that are lukewarm, the backslider, you know, the unbeliever, the agnostics. I'm looking for this word to draw some people on tonight. Hey, man, I thank God really going to move uh, not by power, not by corbobosi. Not by power nor by, by might, but by his spirit in this hour. It's something about when I get in this word. When I get in this word, I get strength. When I get in this word, it's like my whole body be quickened. You know, when I get in this word, like it's like a, a fresh impartation, a fresh anointing. It's something about this word right here, and I love it. I love it. I love it. And I do this Monday through Friday because this word right here gives me strength. Um, you know, I can go back and listen to my own messages and get strength. I mean, I can hear it and I know it's nobody but the Lord. So I thank God for that. God bless you. One of my super, uh, super fans, sister Mary, uh, sister Cassandra, those y'all on tonight, follow me. And I thank y'all for your diligence as well. Amen. And if this word has been a blessing to you, uh, throughout the weeks, uh, whatever, uh, high rooms ministry has been doing, learn to be a giver. Do you understand? People do not understand the importance of giving. You know, you don't eat at Burger King and pay McDonald's. You understand? You don't eat at McDonald's and pay Burger King. Learn how to be a giver. You understand? If I sow into your carnal, if I sow into your spiritual, how much more, how much is it a hassle for me to receive carnal? And many people don't understand that. When you go to work, when you go to work Monday through Friday, right? If you're going to work, you clock in and out. You've been clocking like clocking in like you're supposed to do. And you got your time. You got your time sheet, right? You got paid by the end of the week. Do you understand? So the labor that goes in, something should be coming back. You understand the table that you eat at, you should be bringing something. Something's wrong if you don't give unto your mantle. If you don't give from the leader you follow, if you don't give for what you're eating, so you, you take in, but you ain't giving nothing back. Many of you have to understand you reap what you sow. So I thank God uh, for that as well. And I thank God for those who, who actually follow this ministry. I thank God for those who give. You understand? I thank God for, you know, people that really, that pull on me. You understand? And it's nobody but the Lord. Don't get it twisted. But when people pull on me, listen, what it does is it, it drives me to give a little bit more. It drives me to give a little bit more. And I, I just thank God for just a, a, a mind to seek him. I thank God for a made up mind, a fixed up heart. And we got an awesome word tonight about the root of iniquity. God bless you, um, Yah's, uh, Yah warrior. If I said that right, it's all love, whatever, whatever it, I think it said. Anyway, God bless you, Sister Michaela. God bless you all, all on the replay, Facebook, YouTube, wherever you watch it from, Twitter, uh, Instagram, wherever, all over. So God bless y'all. And I had a word about the root of iniquity. I had this word uh, probably like a couple weeks ago. And 
what I do is when I'm in prayer and God begins to minister to me and impart into me, God bless you, Sister Mary, love you so much. Um, when God begins to impart into me and give me messages, um, I can be doing things around the house. I can be at work. I can be uh, sitting on the couch uh, watching TV. I can be doing anything. And most of the time when I'm praying, like 75% of the time when I pray and I meditate, things begin to come to me about things that we need to address and, and you know, what God wants for the people. And heavy, uh, there was a couple messages that God spoke to me loud and clear last week. Um that came that came up and I thank God for that as well and like I said I believe in this hour we're really getting up, we're, we're getting ready to hear the voice of God in this hour uh, I believe without compromise uh, there are too many compromises in this hour you know but I believe God has some non-conformance um, people that ain't gonna back down people that ain't gonna buckle uh, people that ain't gonna sugarcoat what God is saying I'm gonna tell you what thus says the Lord whether you like it or not and that's what I do. You have to understand, I'm a watchman. I'm an eagle eye prophet. You know, I see. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I got eyes to see. And there are things that God will show me, you know what I'm saying, that I have to declare unto the people about my life and in their, in their life, you know what I'm saying? So I just thank God for eyes to see, you know what I mean? I thank God for just giving me a, a heart for the people as well. Not only do I have a heart after God, but I have a heart for people. You know, to see souls saved. That's why I stay sweet. I stay gentle. That's why I don't handle y'all any kind of way. You know, that's why if you need anything, I come to you and, you know, and I, I speak to you and I encourage you. You know, but see, I'm not, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to strong arm you. I'm not going to strong arm you telling you got to get it right. No, it's not that. Uh, a lot of times we need rebuke as well. So there'll be times where I rebuke you, but you have to understand it's all in love. It's all in love. Um, Open rebuke is better than hidden love, as the scripture was saying, as the Holy Ghost brought it to me. And what I know what uh, in this hour, people do not like rebuke. They do not like to be told what they don't like to be told what it is. I'm going to make it plain. They don't want to they don't want you to lay it out plain to them and tell them what it is, what their problem is and rebuke them and let them know, listen, what you're doing, it ain't right. It ain't lining up with the word. Get yourself together. So people cannot take rebuke. Now, correction is different. Now, when you get rebuked, you get hit with the word. Ain't no laughing, ain't no talking, ain't no ain't no uh, coming in tongues. You get rebuked about what you're doing, about how you live and where you are in the spirit. Why are you still at the same level? There, there's a time when you need rebuke. I need rebuke. You understand? Because we, a lot of us, we ain't right. We think we right half the time. Yeah, we striving to get right. But a lot of us, really, we just messed up. So the only thing that's going to help you in an hour like this is rebuke. To be to be told, excuse me, to be told what is wrong, be told what is right. You understand? You need a covering. And that's what's so wrong with many of y'all now. You don't have no covering. You just, you have a renegade spirit. That spirit is real bad down here on the Gulf Coast. I mean, they just all over. They from this ministry, that ministry. And, you know, nobody's submitting. They don't like to submit. Not everybody. But there, there's a large group, there's a, there's a big number that don't like to submit. you under everybody's word. Every, you listen to everybody's prophecy. you on everybody's scope. That is a dangerous thing because when you eat from a table, you can get food poisoning. Because you're eating everywhere, first natural, then spiritual. You can't eat at everybody's table. And so now you come back contaminated and come hear me. And now you don't agree with something that you heard over there. See, now you toss to and fro confused. That's why I say it only takes one voice to confuse you. One voice to confuse you. And many of y'all who follow me, y'all know when it comes to stuff like that. I'm going to tell you the truth because I've been there. I've been there. I ain't just I ain't just teaching and ministering uh, for no reason. God don't have me on here in vain. I've been there, amen. And this is why I say, beloved, we have to get to a root of a thing, the root of iniquity. This word right here. It is is going to help you come to a root of why you do what you do, where this stuff even started from. See, a lot of us, beloved, have things like these familiar spirits, 
uh, things that were passed down from our parents, our, our fathers, you know, our, our mother's houses. See, we got this stuff that was passed down from generation to generations. These familiar spirits. This is why I think it, it's very important. It's very imperative uh, in this hour that we address the root of a thing. Go down to the root of the bitterness. Let's go down to the root of the unforgiveness. Let's let's go back to where this stuff first started. Why are you holding on to this stuff? Why are you holding on to hatred, the bitterness? You can't un, you can't forgive. You're not apologetic. Like what? See, let's go to the root of this thing. While you are the way you are, this is why many of y'all seeing things affect you physically because of what you harbor it inside. Don't you know what what you harbor and spiritually can affect you naturally? Some people don't know that. You understand? Just like if you would go to the hospital and you was if you was to have a stroke, they would ask you, uh, have you been holding on anything? Have you been angry? Have you been mad? See, a lot of people that have strokes and stuff, some of them folks be holding stuff. They be holding stuff in them and they don't even realize. That's why they send you a psychiatrist or something in the hospital. When you have a stroke, they ask you questions and different things and, you know, if, if, you know, what, what happened prior to this? And, you know, they start asking you different things about mentally. Uh, they start doing that. And this is why I say it's important that we get to the root of a thing. Get to the root of why we lie. Get to the root of why we steal, why we cheat. This stuff can be embedded into us. So now your father was a drunk. Now you want to be a drunk. You saw your mother smoke cigarettes and black and mouths and, and weeds, uh, weed and blunts and everything else. So now you, you smoking and you getting hot. So beloved, now what happens is these familiar spirits, which these demons now, they attach to that and they know, they know where you come from. It's, it's, it's from, a, it's from anything that's familiar. It knows what you're connected to and what familiar spirits do. Familiar spirits are assigned to your life to cause failure, destruction. That's what they do. And see what familiar spirit, it'll have stuff up in you that's not of God. That's why you lie you because you heard your mama lie. So now that familiar spirit, then God on you. That demon will manifest it on you because you lie. See, it's about a root, the root of why we do this. You understand why you masturbating and watching porno? Not knowing this started when you was a child at your friend's house. When his father introduced y'all to it, molested y'all, raped you, you understand this stuff, this stuff just don't happen just to happen. Listen to me on this. We don't just do stuff just to do it. A lot of this stuff, we've carried this stuff since our childhood. This is about the root of iniquity. Y'all, some of y'all, y'all better hear me on tonight. I mean, when I tell you, hear me on tonight. Because like I say, when, when God is speaking a message, it's for somebody. It's for somebody. Like I say, everybody don't have an ear to hear this. This is why we still demon possessed, still messed up. Because we don't have an ear for the truth. You don't want you don't want the truth behind what's behind this bitterness, this this anger. What's going on with the numbers? A lot of y'all in and out. Let me know what's going on. Am I freezing? All right. Well, I see Sister Cassandra still typing, so I'm going to keep rolling. <laughs> I, I Like I said, I see in and out, but I'm not sure. So I want to make sure because I saw the numbers drop as well. So I'm, I know something happened, but I don't know exactly what. Hey, Amen. But like I say, don't you want to know uh, the, 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 um, the reason behind why you do what you do? Why you feel the way you feel. Why you think the way you think. So like I said, it goes back to our childhood. The things that we do. How we used to watch porno. We used to watch them drink. We used to watch them smoke. We we saw the drug addict. So now this these familiar spirits are on us now because it's been passed down. Now there's a root of iniquity, beloved. You understand? There's a root of a thing. A tree can't grow without a root. So there's some things that grow that come from a seed, amen. These things have been planted and imparted into us. And this word right here is going to really, um, it's really going to get to the foundation of, of the root of iniquity and, and how we can be set free from this stuff. There was some, when I tell y'all, 
there were some things that, that were in my childhood. If I held on to this stuff, it would have been really detrimental to me if I held on to it. About the things I've seen about what people did to me. This message is prophetic for somebody on tonight. We are still harboring stuff and don't know what's there. So I'm going to show you scripture on tonight. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, like I say, uh, this word, the anointing tonight is going to speak to you. It's, it's really going to help somebody understand the root of iniquity. Amen. So we're going to flow without fail. Y'all go ahead and share. Thank y'all for coming in. Uh, the followers on tonight. God bless you. So uh, go with me to Isaiah chapter 59, verse 2. Isaiah chapter 59, verse number 2. And he says, but your iniquities, watch this. He says, but your iniquities have separated uh, separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. So watch this. He says, your iniquity, he said, your iniquities have separated between you and your God. So there's some things that can be standing between you and God. There can be some things that can be standing between your greater anointing, your release, your breakthrough. There can be some things that's standing in between you and God. So watch this. He said, but your iniquities, what, what, what an iniquity, let's break this down on tonight. Let's rightfully divide this thing. Iniquity can be something in you that you don't know is there. See, unless the conviction comes, Unless the Holy Ghost give you this thing, one thing about it, you know when you sin, you know when you messed up, you heard what came out of your mouth. You heard when you cursed your boss out, your co-worker out. You heard when you cursed your husband out. You did the drugs. You cheated. You did the adultery. See, you know, see, you know what you're doing then. You, you know what you're doing. Those who willfully sin remain in no more sacrifice. So we know what sin is. But one thing about iniquity iniquity can be in you and you don't even know it and you think you right see yeah it's like in the same category but iniquity is like on a different street it's on a different street but in the same neighborhood I need y'all to receive it go ahead and receive it so when you sin you know what you're doing you sin but iniquity can be that can be hidden iniquities there's stuff that's hidden in you and you don't know what's there. You understand? That's I'm, See, I'm trying to help some of y'all. Y'all boogers that mean and nasty and, and just ugly for no reason at all. Just hateful. Can't get a hug, a handshake. You're not a giver. You don't have no love. You're not diligent. There's a reason for all that. There's something. There's something in you. But I'm going to show you, watch this. I watch really good word, just follow me on tonight. I'm not picking on you, I'm not throwing off on you. But if you think that, that's good. You think that, that's good because it's going to show you you. It's going to show you you. So watch. He says, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Your iniquity have separated you and God. And he says, and your sins have hid his face from you. Your sins have hid his face from you. Your sins, what you do, your sins have hid his face from you. So let me write for the divide this thing, what it says in the scripture. When he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Don't you know you got to be with God first? <laughs> you got to be with God first. Blasphemy and see if God will still be with you. Keep living a life of sin, fornicating and not repenting and see if God going to stay with you. Go back to the world where he says no, no principality, nor demon, nor, no, uh, nor tribulation. Nothing shall separate you. Guess what? Don't you know there are some things that can separate you, but you have to be with God. See, none of that. See, if we fall, we have an advocate, which is Jesus Christ. Principalities can't separate us from God. But those are for the ones that are in God. But notice when it said, didn't say in those scriptures. When it said nothing shall separate you from the love of God. Notice what it didn't say. It didn't say iniquity and it didn't say sin. Do you understand? Learn to rightfully divide what the word of God was saying. Because we'll use, y'all bookers will use the word to fit your lifestyle. 
for what you're doing. You say, well, can't nothing separate me from the, the love of God. I beg to differ. You better rightfully divide that thing and go back and read it. Go back and read it and see what it says and come back to me and, and just, you know, let's debate it. I'm not going to argue with you, but I'm going to give you the revelation and insight of what I have so we can get to understand all in love. You understand everything I minister and teach you could go back and read this stuff and check it. I, even the stuff I paraphrase, I paraphrase so much scripture. And they'd be like, wow, I ain't never heard that. Well, it's right there in the book. All you got to do is read your Bible. Do y'all read your Bible? One thing about me, I'm, I'm, under, I'm under a word church. I'm under a word church. Like I say, the word be so strong. See, there's so much word that's birthed in me. I be word come out my mouth. I don't even realize I'm in a Bible preaching church. That's all we get is word. That's all we get is word. So that's what's in me. You understand that the husband man must be first partaker of the fruit Bible. So that I have to give you the word. He said, these words I speak unto you, they are spirit and in life. I ain't learned scripture to impress you. Fact about it, I learned scripture to be set free. I learned scripture from keep from losing my mind. I learned scripture to not end up in a mental uh, institution. That's how I learned scripture. I learned scripture and studied scripture so I wouldn't blow my brains. I'm not thinking about you. That, that devil ain't nothing but a lie. I didn't learn scripture to impress you on a midnight cry. I learned scripture for my soul. I ate this, I ate this bread of life. I ate this word. I didn't eat, it's your season, that you're going to be, I commando, I feel the anointed of God. I didn't get the, I didn't just feed on that word that, that it's your season and that you're going to get a check in the mail. I did not get, I did not feed on none of that because my spirit didn't bear witness with that. You know what I bear witness? Turn away from your wicked ways. I bear witness with that. Repent, receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I receive that kind of stuff. Like I love that word right there. That we are seated in the heavenly realms. That we seated with Christ Jesus. See, I got I got that word right there. You understand that I'm a royal priesthood. So that's the kind of word that I got. That I fed on. That seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. You understand to humble yourself. Listen, God, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and God will exalt you. See, I got that kind of word. I didn't learn scripture to impress you. I got scripture to keep my soul, amen. So why, this is what we're doing, beloved. This goes back to what I'm saying. The root of iniquity. The root of iniquity. He says, but your iniquities, uh, verse two, Isaiah 59, verse number two. He says, but your iniquities have separated uh, separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear you. Verse three, he says, for your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity and your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue have murmured perverse a uh, perverseness. One thing about it, your sins can hide God's face from you. That's the thing that can be standing between you and God. Do you understand? He was talking about iniquity. Your fingers with iniquity, your bloods have spoken lies, and your tongues have muttered perverseness. One thing about iniquity, iniquity can be there and you don't even know it. Don't you know that lies, lies is a form of iniquity. Because you you not you not speaking according to the truth. You speak in lies. Some of us we we pathological lies. We lie about everything. Speak Holy Ghost. Go ahead and speak on that. Because we lie, not knowing that's in you too. See, we lie about everything. Lie without a cause. Don't even have to lie, but we lie. See, that stuff can be in you. That's an iniquity. And see, you think you you think because you ain't drinking, you ain't smoking, you telling a lie. That's just as bad. God said in His Word, Rick Kobase, that a lie will not tarry in His sight. That's what He said in His Word. See, one thing about a lie, a lie can also separate you from God. Many people don't understand that, beloved. One more scripture on tonight, and I want to show you this. And the reason why I did this kind of word to give y'all understanding of what iniquity can do to you. Iniquity can separate you from God. 
They are not ministering this kind of word. What they what they doing is I'm gonna tell you what they are doing. They are giving you half the scroll. They're giving you half the scripture. They're not rightfully dividing. They and then when they quote scripture, they halfway quote it. So wait a minute. Don't give me the the half of scripture. Give me the whole thing. Don't just look, don't sugarcoat with me. Give me the full word. Give me what the word says. So what they're doing is. They they add no they add and take it from the word of God. You understand? He said the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, and the entrance of the word bring of light. He also said that the word of God is forever settled in the heavens, and his scriptures cannot be broken. These scriptures can't be broken. So you might as well stop quoting half the scripture. Start quoting the full thing. For his fullness that we all received. Bible. So I'm saying it, it's something about when you get the whole scroll. How many of us want the whole scroll? How many of us want the whole scroll? I want the full word. Don't give me half or nothing. Don't sugarcoat with me. Tell me the truth. If the word told me to repent, tell me to repent. The word told me to come out from amongst ye and be ye separated. Says the Lord of hosts, tell me that the Lord said that in his word. Not to come out from amongst them and be ye separated. Have no works but the unfruitful works of darkness. And that there's a difference between the clean and the unclean, the holy and the unholy. Tell me that kind of word. Y'all better help me on tonight. Tell me that kind of word that's going to set me free. Don't, don't lead me astray with a false word. Don't lead me, don't lead me astray with half the truth. Give me the whole truth. But look, we got to go down to the root of this stuff of why we messed up. Why we still angry, why we still bitterness. How many of us right now, be honest, you holding on to some stuff. You holding on to what somebody said, well, you don't know what they did to me. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you in a word what happens when you don't release. When you don't release from that stuff, about what they did to you when you don't release you hold up your blessings you hold up your manifestation you hold up your breakthrough by being mad and bitter for 10 years we come out of trials mentally still stuck there so we still stuck in the trial, stuck on what they did, stuck on how they lied at you, lied about you, stuck about the allegations, stuck about the divorce. Now we still stuck there. Your mind going back to it. So every chance you get now, you slandering a person. You talking about them, you backbiting. Do you know what you're doing? You cursing yourself. God watching you. I don't have this your cause, it's your season. That's why the number's going to drop. That's why the number's going to drop. Because this ain't the kind of word people want to hear. This word right here, see, it ain't for the itchy ears. It's not for the itchy ears. It's for those who want the truth. Beloved, we got stuff so deep down inside of us that got us messed up, got us lying, got us backbiting, got us conniving, got us cheating, got us stealing trying to sabotage to get ahead trying to sabotage marriages what in you that got you doing all that what is in you that got you still stuck in envy jealous over another man when you got way more things you got way more going on in your life but you're jealous of somebody else just because they character just because they are Jesus woman just because they're a man of God, got a, he a man of valor, a man of prayer. Because he has an influence, now you jealous. What got you like that? See, that's something up in you. See, this stuff we commanded about by stove. This stuff goes back to our youth. It goes back to our youth. When we watched this stuff, when we was rejected, abandoned. See, we, we still dealing with rejection. 
you still dealing with how your father walked out of your life, how your mother was never there for events and your your music uh, your music seminars and how they wasn't there at the football game and the cheerleading events and the basketball and the, the football and the baseball. See, you still holding on to that stuff because they was never there because you didn't have what the other kids have and that you were less fortunate. Now, everybody talked about you and how you was a bully. So now you still holding on to this stuff. So now you done seen the, the popular kid from school that used to be in school. You still see him. You looking at a man because of how they used to do you in school. We still harboring stuff. Three, four months ago, they lied, allegations, slandered your name on Facebook, had everybody talking about you. You can't let it go. You still holding on to it. Trying to curse, trying to fight, but you say you ain't God. See, we come out of trials. God didn't deliver us and set us free from stuff and have pulled us out of the darkness, but we still going back to a thing. And I come by and call see. Being petty and childish. See, when I thought as a child, I did childish things. When I put away that stuff, I became a man. Do you understand? See, that root of iniquity, that root of iniquity goes all the way back to your childhood. These familiar spirits, these things that was passed down. Many of us are harboring things. This is your chance on tonight. Say, God set me free. Psalms, uh, Psalms, let's see, um, Psalm 66, verse number 18. Psalm 66, verse number 18, he says, And if I regard iniquity in my heart, regard something, it's to hold it. Like put a, put a veil behind it, put like a cage behind it. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. He was saying, he caught the revelation that if this stuff is in me and I'm praying and I'm seeking God, I'm talking about I want a breakthrough. I want change to hit my life. But you can't forgive your co-worker that back, backstabbed you, that got you rolled up. You can't, you can't forgive the family member how things went sour with the money, with the property. And I call by by say, prophetically speaking to somebody on tonight. Y'all better hear me on tonight. This stuff right now got y'all, got you, got you in like, like a stronghold. This iniquity, this unforgiveness got y'all in a stronghold. This bitterness got you in a stronghold. You envying the next person? Because they didn't got forward and you still at the same place. Learn from them. Somebody else's ministry is flourishing. Don't get jealous. Learn from them. It ain't cool by by say. It may not have been your time for ministry. Don't you know it's time? I could easily be uh, envious and jealous of, of all those in the ministry that have gone before me. But they had, they had to pay the way. They had to sit and be birthed. So why be jealous of somebody else because they, they are a step ahead of you in ministry because they get to operate on Sundays here and there because they minister on Wednesday deliverance nights. Why would I be jealous of that? Let them go for it. It ain't my time. So why be jealous of the other brothers and the sisters that's going forward when they done sat and had time to give birth and let God do what he going to do? See, I'm saying, I look at that. I don't just sit and get jealous. I don't let jealousy set in. I sit and say, well, God, what is it that I need to do? Maybe, God, you preparing me for my season. That cool bye-bye. So you preparing me for my time. So why am I going to sit up here and get jealous of the next man that's moving forward in ministry? When you got an influence, you got people flocking to your world. You got people getting set free. When you have your own ministry, and then we get we sit we sit in ministry and get jealous of others in the same ministry, not knowing we plan on the same team. This is for somebody. Jealous because they got ordained and you didn't. We do so much petty stuff. Now we hold on to this. Now you come out and double say you coming in church, can barely look at the brother, can barely look at the sister. They pass you up, you don't want to hold, you don't want to uh, shake hands, give them a hug, nothing. Because you're bitter and angry because they got ordained and you didn't. 
because they got to preach last week and you didn't because apostle called you up and you didn't get to go up and do the welcome. That's what I'm saying. Like we, we get, we do all, we do all kinds of stuff and that stuff going in the house of God. We get, we get so much jealous, but I'm going to tell you, we get, je we get jealous of others because they going forward and we not. We got to get to the root of iniquity. What has us jealous? What has us like that? What, what have us backbiting and gossiping about the next person? All that stuff is sin. And you don't realize it. There's a root because you think it's okay. See, that's a hidden iniquity. That's something down inside of you that, listen, you don't know is there. You think it's all right. You think it's all right. But tonight... Examine yourself to see if you're in a faith. Watch this, beloved. Let me show you what he, uh, what, what he said. He says, I regard iniquity in my heart. The Lord would not hear me. He said, but, verse 19, but verily God hath heard me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. But guess what? Guess what he did? He prayed about it. He cried out about it. Because the prayer was going to free him. See, the prayer was going to release him. God created me a right spirit, created me a clean heart. Get this filth, get this stuff up out of me. Get these hidden iniquities. Get this stuff up out of me. See, now the prayer calls him to be attentive to your prayers. His ears are attentive to their prayers in this hour. His eyes are upon the righteous. See, but it was a prayer. It was a prayer that caused God to hear. See, unless you cry out to him and say, God, listen, get this stuff up out of me. God ain't going to move for you. God ain't going to move for you like that. Verse 20 says, but blessed be God, which have not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy for me. See, God had mercy upon you when you was holding on to all that stuff, harboring unforgiveness, bitterness. Can't say I'm sorry. Unapologetic. Being like that will cause your blessing to be held up and God not going to hear from you. Your prayer, when you go seek God and say, God, move for me, take this stuff up out of me. I don't want to be like this. Then God will move. But see, we hold on to jealousy and envy. We mean, we nasty. You think God going to move for you? What do you say in this world of God, beloved, that your sins have hid God's face from you? It's your sins that hid, that hid his face from you. It's the way you live. It's your raggedy lifestyle. You coming to church and ain't never coming to God. That's what hid your face from God. See, that's something standing between you and God in this hour. It's your iniquity. It's things that you thought was right. It was never right. So I'm giving you an opportunity tonight. God has given somebody an opportunity tonight to repent and turn away and say, let go of the unforgiveness. I come on Kobosi. God moved for even though she lied on me. Even though he talked about me, even though he backbited me, God moved for him not by power nor by might, but by your spirit. God sent an angel to him. God bless him coming in, bless him go out. God sent a blessing, Lord. Move like never before. See, God want to see if you can pray for your enemy. Can you pray for those that despitefully use you? Can you bless and curse not? See, God is trying you. See, God don't want you to harbor this stuff because he knows, listen, he ain't going to be able to move for you. You're not going to be able to be cursed and blessed at the same time. And I call bind their bobo see, sweet and bitter water can't flow out of the same, out of the same fountain. I need y'all to receive that. That was in my spirit. You ain't come on their bobo see. You ain't going to be able to flow like that. God ain't going to be able to use you like that. You can't even flow in ministry. You can't teach like that. When you got stuff up in you, it's going to be hard for you to teach and minister because you ain't got a pure heart. Your heart not pure, so God not going to use you. God not going to anoint you because you don't have love. Don't you know the anointing comes through love? If you don't have love, God can't use you. God can't use you being bitter, mean, and nasty. You got to stay humble. You have to stay meek. And I'm not boasting at all. But why do you think God uses me? Because I show a lot of love. I show a lot of love. And it's my cry. It, it, it's my cry. And 
like I say, it, it's not about it's it's not it's not even it's not even about fame. It, it's not about you know it, it's not about money. It's not about none of that. It, it's it's not about your name up in lights. See, and we getting jealous holding on to stuff. Knowing that God can bless you, bless you too. Knowing that God can move for you. Do you understand? And see, I was at a place I was holding stuff from my childhood and, and holding stuff for what people did to me, holding stuff for how my father wasn't there. You know, how I had to watch my mother, you know what I'm saying, provide. She made a way. I mean, she made a way. She did whatever she could. Saw her come out of government assistance. Did it by herself as a single mother. Didn't have no help. Just praying. Seeking God. Crying out to God. And see, like, you know, I got to a place. And, and I said, God, I said, God, I, I, I need you to move for me. God, take everything up out of me that shouldn't be. That come my mind, say. That bitterness, God, don't let me, I don't have me hating the wrong people. God, you allowed those people to do that. You allowed the backstab. You allowed the people to come up against me. You allowed the allegations. You allowed it all. You allow people to borrow money and not give it back. You allow it all. See, God be trying you. God be trying you. You know, with, with people in your family, people connected to you. And then you say, after all the love I show, why are these people being like that? You didn't do nothing. You didn't do anything. All you did was show love and, and give and prophesy and minister. But then the beat, beat, the have people walk out of your life. See, God will let stuff happen like that to try you. It's to try you. It's to try your faith. To see, okay, I'm going to see if you're going to be able to give. I'm going to let them talk about you like a dog, and I'm going to see if you're going to be able to forgive them. And say, Lord, cry out and say, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Because, God, I know you allowed them to do it. I know you allowed them to come up against me. God, I know you allowed them to come against my marriage and my ministry. See, God tries us in so many different ways. See, you're not knowing that trial that you're going through. God has it like that to see, listen, to see if you're going to praise him. He told the children of Israel, I sent you through to prove you to see what's in your heart. I sent you through to prove you to see what was there. That's why I let the allegations come. I let the lies come. I let them steal money from you. I let you go through all that. See, I wanted to prove you to see if you're going to be faithful. I wanted to prove you to see if you're going to cry out and give. I wanted to prove you to see if you're still going to praise me and say, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. Lord, move for them. Send a blessing to them. Send deliverance to them. Manifest in their life. See, I wanted to prove you to see what's in your heart. I wanted to prove you to see if you was going to love under pressure. See, he want to see what's in your heart. What's in your heart in this hour? See, we harbor iniquity. This stuff will cause God to not move for you. God, please, Lord, whatever you do, Lord, don't have me miss my manifestation. Don't have me miss my visitation by holding on to bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, Lord. Don't let me miss my blessing just because I didn't love. Many of us are missing blessings because we didn't love. All you had to do is show love. All you had to do is help somebody in a time of need. All you had to do is reach out and encourage. You knew they was going through. You knew that was going through trials. You couldn't even message. You couldn't even reach out. But you know the calling of God on your life. You know the anointing on your life will break people through. You know the, the, your world on life will send a word and loose the shackles and loose the chains. But you just ignored it. You didn't show love. Because you holding on to something now. You don't even want to minister and prophesy and use your gift. Because you're still jealous of what happened three years ago. These are, these are church people that do this. These are people who are so in God and, and, and so spiritual. But you hate your brother without a cause. You hate your sister without a cause. 
And see, this is what we do, not knowing why God not moving for us. Sitting in the church every Sunday, mad at your sister, looking upside her head every time she walked by. Holding on a bit of this, we doing this stuff in the church. Sitting in church, looking at the preacher with so much hatred. These people do this, these witchcraft spirits, they sit in the ministry with this spirit, y'all. I'm telling y'all, I see it. I see it every week. These people will sit, listen, these people will sit in the same place, don't even like the preacher. They gave up on the word. Stop operating. Stop seeing it. Y'all, listen, I've seen it. I've, I've seen it with my own two eyes. Do you know how hurtful that is? To see somebody that had so much love, so much diligence, and let a spirit come on them and mess them up and just turn them. Now you're against the preacher. Now you don't fellowship, don't hug, don't... Y'all, that, that, that's, I mean, that right there, that shows me what can happen when God turn you over to a reprobate. And it's sad. It, it, it really sad. But see, that has a lot to do with what you harbor it inside. That iniquity will have you messed up. Beloved, it's about the root of iniquity. Go all the way back to a, uh, to a place where you say, God, remove this unforgiveness, this bitterness, this rage, this stuff, this anger that I got built up. From when I was in my childhood, my youth years. God, I ask you to move this stuff in this hour. Don't let me be bitter. Don't let me be anger at the wrong person. God, I ask you to loose me. God, give me a new mindset. God, erase the memory. Erase the memory. The memory of what happened. The memory how they abused your trust. God, erase the memory of what happened. I don't even want to remember what happened. But God, I said this, this day, make me better and not bitter. Make me a better woman of God. Make me a better man of God. To be better than them. To be better than their actions. Make my actions greater. That's why I say, beloved, go down to a place of the root, the root of a thing. It's, it's, it's the root. It's the root of a thing. Not knowing this stuff has been there. This stuff has been there. And then you wonder why you feel the way you feel. Why are you always sick? Why are you always sick? Because it's something you got inside of you. Why are you always tormented? Why you got restless nights? Why your gifts still ain't flowing? Why it's like you can't even hear God. And, and you, you're trying to get a breakthrough, frustrated, trying to tap a place in the spirit, trying to understand what's going on. It's a spiritual blockage. There's some things we got to remove. Go down to the root in this hour. Love you so much. And like I said, I just wanted to flow uh, on tonight about the root of iniquity. Y'all, we got so much stuff in us. He's hidden iniquity, stuff that we didn't know was there. And I just ask God every day, God, if you see anything that's in me that shouldn't be, get it up out of me. Set me free. Deliver me, God. I don't want to be the same in Jesus' name. God bless y'all. How many of y'all received this word? I thank God for y'all. If you received the type, I received them. Man, awesome, awesome teaching. And I just thank God for an awesome word. Nobody but the Lord. Nobody but the Lord. And like I said, I, I knew I knew the message right here will will help some people. You know, get to a place where you examine yourself. Say, God, what's in me that shouldn't be? These hidden stuff. God, go deep down inside of me. See, God, go back to my childhood. Let me let me come to a place, you know, where I can repent for my youth that I did stuff that I did was wrong. Let me get this stuff, get this bitterness, this, this anger, this, this subtle spirit, this conniving spirit. God, I ask you to move this stuff because, God, I want to be free. I don't want this stuff to hinder my blessings. Not only that, don't let my iniquities hide, be, be hid from me. Don't let my iniquities hide your face from me, God. Don't, don't do that in this hour. Cast not away your Holy Spirit away from me. 
God, create in me a clean heart, renew it in me a right spirit in this hour. And I just thank y'all. God bless y'all. Give into this word on tonight. And I thank you for a giving heart. I thank y'all for being diligent. And if you need all my information, it's on the profile, amen, at ProfitTravisMiller at gmail.com. You can also give into uh, PayPal, amen. God bless y'all. Love you so much. Uh, anybody have any prayer, any questions on tonight, anything that I can uh, help you with as well, I'll be here for a couple minutes on tonight. And I thank God for the word. I thank God for y'all as well. Looking for God to move, looking for an outpouring, um, Towards the end of this month, looking for God to really move through His Word and really speak something. Thy command kobo say. There's gonna be a lot of clarity. I just heard my spirit. There's gonna be a lot of clarity in this hour that you're gonna get understanding of of what God is saying and what God is doing in your life. Uh, some of the worst kind of trials to go through is to go through a trial that you have no understanding of. You don't have no understanding why you go through the trial. You don't have no understanding. Of, of why why the financial issue, why the devil coming from the left or to the right. See, you don't have no understanding. And see, when you go back to a place that you understand that you can't get a positive out of negative. So that's why you see a lot of negative things in your life. That's why you see the troubles. That's why you see the, the hell in your home, hell in your job. You understand? It's because of the stuff that you're going through. See, listen, it's working together for your good. It's working together for your good. Get an understanding of the trial. When you get an understanding of a thing, catch revelation. Revelation changes situation. Did you catch it? Revelation changes situation. So when you're in a situation, you can understand and get revelation out of a thing. It'll turn that thing complete kamastosi. It'll turn that thing completely around. Do you understand? And like I said, I thank God for y'all. Thank God for you being on watching me on tonight. Amen. Yes. Revelation changes situation. Amen. But anyway, uh, who needs prayer on tonight? Any questions? And I thank y'all for coming on tonight. Amen. For a midnight cry. That's all I had tonight. And I'm done. Done. You know, another word in the books. And I, I just thank God for a word, you know. And some of you who struggling with hearing from God, incline your ears, get in a place so God can use you. Start teaching. Um, and I think uh, I'm, I'm, I'm debating. Um, I'm, I'm debating doing uh, a prophetic class. So I know people. <laughs> I know people will get excited about that. I'm debating doing a prophetic class. And then I'll, I'll probably. Uh, it, it's going to be exclusive. So I'll do it. I'll get back with you. And I'm going to have to uh, sacrifice my time with it. So I'll get back with you. And, and tell you, yes. Yeah, so I'll be doing a prophetic class. It's in my, it's in my spirit, Cassandra, to do one. Uh, so I, I'll probably be doing one here soon. I just let God, you know, kind of, you know, flow through me and, and let me know what to do uh, based on everything. So I'll probably do it here off Periscope, and I'll probably make it noonday. Amen. So I, I'll, uh, I'll get back with you. I don't know if I'm gonna do it, but um, I'm just gonna let God lead me. Uh, with that as well. Amen. So God bless y'all. Thank y'all for coming on to another midnight cry. And I'll be back on tomorrow. Those of you coming in, please watch the replay. This thing gonna bless you. You know, like I said, it ain't your, it's your season. Your money's coming. You're gonna get blessed. But this word right here gonna have some people to turn. You know, search your heart in this hour. God, go deep down inside of me. See what's in me that shouldn't be. Fact about it, God, I want you to shine your light down from heaven. And if there's anything that's in me that shouldn't be, get it up out of me. In Jesus' name, love you so much. Y'all be blessed. See you back tomorrow night. Good night.